Hi guys, we're out at the hives today. Um, Tyler's in his fancy new flow hive suit. It's got mesh so it's breathable and he's real proud of it. Um, what he's doing right now is smoking the inner top cover. Um, just trying to get him quieted down for a little bit, disoriented, um, so we can get in there. This is the Russian box. Um, typically Russians can be a little bit more feistier than the Italian bees that are typically um, used in beekeeping, but they're better for winters and um, in the northern parts of the U.S. that can be um, valuable, so that's why we decided to get them. We were having some issues with them. Um, they had made a queen supersedure cell, um, which can be, be not so bueno. Um, we're not quite sure if that's just weird Russian behavior or if they're actually planning on killing off their Russian queen, um, who I have named Anastasia, and I know I'm not supposed to get attached to her, but um, it's my first Russian queen. Um, and then after we do the Russian, we'll be going over and checking on the Italians over here. Um, for whatever reason, our Italians seem to be more feisty than the Russians are. So we're just going to have to see how that goes. Um, but I'm going to be, this is my project, so Tyler's going to be the majority of the um, videographer today. So I'm going to hand this over to him. Okay. Uh, while the bees are pretty docile, coming from someone who's been afraid of bees historically, um, once you get in there and start messing with them, they can start displaying behaviors like bouncing off of your head just to kind of warn you. They're not stinging, they're just trying to say, hey, back off. And I'm not so comfortable with that just yet, so I will fully suit up for this um, just to make sure that I'm protected so I don't run away screaming like a little girl um, once we do that I also only suit up because uh, every time that I've tried to video there's been one that's gone after my hair and chased me off so I'm wearing a suit today so I don't get chased off you want to get this yep. zipper on it's like Take putting that. on a dress. You just need an extra hand. Oh, you're in your hair. That'd be why. There's plenty of it. It's nice to have an extra hand. That can actually see what's going on. He's still going to zip my hair up in it, though. Naturally. Hold this. While he's fixing me. <coughs> oh, Bless that's, that's going to be lovely. Okay. You got them both? Huh? You got both sides? No. Hey, you do. No. Never mind. Okay. So these gloves, it's kind of hard to feel what you're doing. So when you're trying to grab little things, it's difficult. Um, a lot of beekeepers just work with their hands because that way they can feel if they're touching a bee. It's harder to feel the bee through the gloves with these. So we have to be really careful not to squish them. Because if we squish them, they'll become angry because they send off a pheromone that says, hey, we're in danger. Um, so we should attack whatever's squishing us. All right. So he already sprayed down the top box. I'm going to give it another couple puffs real quick. And I'm going to move it over. I'm going to take off the first hive body right here because the likelihood is the queen's in the bottom. Um, but we're still going to keep it real close by just in case. 
I would take off that uh, inner cover before taking off the whole body. Well, that yeah, way you I have, have to, a I have to poop it. just in case. So we're going to slide this over. And we're lucky right now they haven't built up propolis, which is a bee glue. Um, we haven't had to deal with that yet. And normally you'll have to use your high tool, hive tool uh, to be able to get those open. It's super sticky stuff. Go ahead and Can we just give it a minute to kind of do their thing? Think about life. So we haven't quite mastered the art of getting the smoker going. It's supposed to be a cool smoke, so when you put your hand to it, it's not hot. Um, but there's a fine line between raging fire and nothing at all. <laughs> and you just got to find that. And I'd close it back up. And then we close it back up. Once I get that going. So what the smoke does is it doesn't burn them or chase them away or anything. It uh, activates their natural instinct to gorge on honey just in case there's a fire around. So they'll gorge themselves on the honey and get out of our way. And then because they're so full, they won't fly so much. There's actually a fair amount of them up here. Which for only having this box on for a week is slightly surprising. I'm not quite doing anything just yet. I don't really see any comb up here. Now we're getting sticky. Alright, and I'm going to smoke the bottom portion. See how that goes. I'm super anxious to get in here because I'm worried about that queen. Um, we don't know if she's going to be replaced or not, or if she's produced any um, brood that they could turn into queens. The last time we were in here, they made that supersedure cell, and I destroyed it because I was worried they were going to try and um, get rid of my queen that I paid extra money for because it was Russian. Oh, looky there. So that's some nice fresh beeswax. They're probably trying to bridge the area in between the two boxes. Which is absolutely natural. Um, but I'm going to give them a little puff and send them all down. Now these bees should be a little bit darker than the Italians because they're Russian. And that darker color um, just means that they can stay warmer for that winter time. So I am going to pull this first frame up, and I might need my high tool real quick. This helps me out a little bit so my fingers don't smush them. I have to be as gentle as I can be and try not to make any real startling movements with them. They do not like startling movements. They don't like loud noises. that side. I'm going to have to be real careful to keep this over the frame because if the queen is on here and she falls off, most of the times she's too fat to um, get back into the hive and she will die outside of it. What these guys are doing is they're engorging themselves on that nectar because they think there's a um, 
fire going on. So they're trying to eat all of our nectar right now. So you don't want to smoke them too much because then you'll lose some of your potential honey. And these guys are doing the same thing right there. And there's another queen cell. Yep. There's another queen cell. Oh. Um, all of that up there, that white, is capped honey. So that's going to um, sit in there and dehydrate for a while. But I'm counting one, two, three, four queen cells. Yeah. If you can, point to them. Let me put this down. So, I'm going to hide for a while. This right here, excuse me ma'am, that right there is a queen cell. It's kind of pushed out, whereas the other combs are flat. Um, there's one right here. There's one right there. There might be some in the mix here, but uh, we think they're supersedure cells. Yep, there's one hidden under there. We think they're supersedure cells because they're in the middle of the hive. Um, if they were planning on swarming, typically the swarming cells would be towards the bottom here. And we really haven't seen that. It's all been in the middle. So we think they just don't like their queen and they're going to put her on the guillotine or something. Also, you'll notice that uh, a lot of the wax on the other side of this is white wax. That's what their wax naturally looks like. We had coated the frames with uh, uh, industrial wax, so that's a... Uh, wax that we had bought because we didn't have any uh, they don't typically like um, to just straight up build wax on a plastic foundation which Kay and I both enjoy the idea of plastic over frameless which is an option uh, plastic when you go to extract it won't fall apart honey all right now I'm gonna pull up this one my bets the Queen's gonna be on this one right here because that's where the most activity is at oh and that's really heavy so they got quite a lot going on right now in this one So it looks like they got nectar up in this corner. Yep. They typically will put the nectar at the top and the brood will go in the middle and then the bee bread will be around that. Um, and I'm not seeing the queen right there. Oh wow. oh wow, those are drone cells. Yeah, those are all drone cells. Drone cells, they describe them as bullet shaped, so they stick straight out the top there. So the that queen one. definitely is laying. We've got all those babies coming on. Um, drones are much bigger than the workers, and there are fewer of them, so they don't need as many cells of drones. Um, That's kept honey. Yep, all that right there is capped honey. Oh, there's the queen. Oh, yeah, there's the queen right there. Nice if you want. Um, and then to show you a drone, I'm trying to find one here. They're the big boys. Where is he at? I saw one. Like I said, there's quite a few less of the drones, so they're harder to find. Um, but they are sizably bigger. That's it. The one has black. Hmm? That one right there doesn't have a black. Some of them, yeah, are a little bit lighter and some of them are a little bit darker. And that's because this is a hybrid hive, so there's some Russian, some Italian. They're just kind of mixed in. I think that one might have just emerged. Yeah. 
That one right. And there might also be that because they're new, they're a little bit lighter colored, so right the babies there. might be lighter colored. Okay. Still looks a little bit wet. Where'd that queen get off to? Did she go over on the other side? It's right there. Oh, right there. Now she's on her way to the other side. Now what she's doing is she's looking for uh, empty cells where she can lay the brood in. So that could be one of the reasons that they've built so many uh, queen cells. Is she didn't have so enough uh, comb built Step out. Just in case, because she has a tendency to drop. Um, well, they, uh, they're not intelligent creatures, per se. So, any little disturbance, or if they get squished, even one gets squished, they freak out a bit. And Tyler's building up some smoke right now. But as of right now, I don't think we have any. Okay. Yeah, we're out of smoke, mostly. Here, there's a will. Just need some TLC. Just give them a little bit of time. They all have a lot of bodies to push through. And though, even though I know the queen's on there, just for the sake of science, I like looking through all of it. That's her phone. So, if you look right there, they've got propolis. They're trying to stick the frames together. That's why I have to use the hive tool to push it apart if I'm fighting against that. And us having a uh not dealt with propolis before. Propolis is uh, por partially uh, made with tree sap and oh boy, oh boy. See all the bees? So right now we got a drone cell. Right next super to seizure. a super seizure cell. Super seizure cells kind of look like peanuts. And I think that's a drone larva. Right there. Oh, look at that guy with the pollen baskets in the middle. Upper towards the top. Upper towards the top and the pollen basket. There's a drone. That one? This guy right here with the pollen basket. See how its legs are yellow? That is pollen that they store. Pollen is their protein source. That's a drone right there. They got the big old eyes. Drones do not have a stinger, so they can't do anything to you when you mess with them. So a lot of times you'll see people just straight put the drone in their mouth. There's no danger. Their sole purpose in life, a drone, is uh, to mate with queen. That is not a queen cap cell. It's not it's capped, not it's capped. Still open. I think they just put them there just in case. It's just this weird Russian behavior that they're always ready for disaster. Um, so they build these in case that they need to absorb the queen, not necessarily that they will. Um, and that queen, obviously, is still laying eggs, so there's no reason for her right now um, for them to have to get rid of her. Um, 
unless of course that she's only producing um, drones. If she was only producing drones, then we might have an issue. Um, that means that she wasn't fully mated because drones you can produce um, without being fertilized. Um, now, if but you see, if you look down in there, you can see eggs in all of those little white pieces of rice, teeny tiny. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera. I can't see it. There's a better angle we can get them at. But they're in there. There's babies. I think all of that is uh, royal jelly, mm -hmm. which they'll feed all larvae, but depending on how much of it they feed. For how long? For how long depends on whether it's a regular worker or if it's going to be a queen. Um, I'm not seeing any design uh, signs of disease. There's no squishy black parts. There's no little mites stuck to them. All right, so we looked at the queen. There's babies present. They've got food in there. Real quick, I'm going to take off this wax we got going. I know they worked so hard on it, um, but that's going to become an issue further down the road if we leave it there because it's going to be real hard for me to separate those cages. I'm going to take that. Um, wax has a lot of good pro properties to it. Propolis used to be used for uh, chewing, gum. chewing gum. And it was a way to, because of all the antibacterial properties inside of it, uh, inside of the propolis, I'm going to... Uh, go get a cup for this but I'm gonna leave you right there because of um, the antibacterial properties of propolis that was what was used before toothpaste was invented And it's not good to leave it on the ground. I'm going to put it in a jar. If you leave it on the ground, that's what um, can attract wax moths, which is one of their biggest dangers. So here's a beetle, but I'm not quite sure what kind of beetle it is. If anyone knows. That could very well be a hive beetle, I'm not positive though. Boy, but we've always been told, never miss the opportunity to squish a beetle. So this sugar has been here for I don't know, three weeks, two weeks? At least two weeks. At least two weeks. So they're eating it, but just real slow like. It was only, they were only eating maybe a quarter of it. Just for comparison's sake, that's what we originally had in there. So not much. They haven't really been taking it, but that might mean they're just taking it from natural sources. Which is perfectly fine. Um, what these guys doing right here with their butts up in the air? They're fanning their pheromones. They're trying the queen to pheromone. They're trying to send up a message to the other bees that this is where um, they want them to come. They have this is where their hive is. This is where their food is. Um, that's just to get attention to get the other bees to come to wherever they direct them to go. Oh, okay.
because they got that sugar still, I'm going to close them up. Move on to our next hive. Go ahead and take the phone and the camera. Nope. Say hi, Galen. Hi. <laughs> you can hear them, but you can't hear them. Well, see, now we've made the Russians mad. So they're going to be buzzing and trying to. We, added, we also had it open. <coughs> So that pheromone is not as thick in there. So they're trying to spread it out a little bit more. It was all aired out. He's almost got it going. It works if you believe that it works. There. You always think you have enough and then it just stops working all of a sudden. Um, so down here are all these dead bees. Um, so it might be predation. We don't know if we've got a raccoon or a skunk that's been swiping their paws up in there and grabbing them. Um, but it's so warm that keeping the reducer on there might cook them in there. So the entrance reducer would just block off part of that and protect them a little bit. But um, got all those dead bees. So what they do is they pull the bees out, they suck the honey off them, and they spit them out, and then they just brought on the floor. Um, and then there's a lot more here in front of the Italians. Over here with the Russians, there really, there's nothing on the ground. I mean, there might be a few, but not anything like that. So, not quite sure what's going on there. And then this guy right here is a native little bee or wasp. Um, they'll have robbers come to their nests and try to steal their honey. Almost got it. Fire bug. We want to make sure that we have enough smoke before we get into this second hive here um, just in case because you don't want to be caught with angry bees and nothing to calm them down. We do have a spray bottle of sugar water to spray on them um, but really that just gives them something to clean off of them. It doesn't really disorient them. They're just too busy cleaning themselves to bother with you. So we've got this lovely wooded area back here for them. Um, and they've got flowers up along the leaves there and in the trees. And then there's an orchard way out back for them to eat. Tyler and I took a walk this morning and there was um, honeysuckle growing along the road everywhere basically. Um, that's an invasive species, but the bees love it, so that's okay with us. <laughs> Last week I planted some more flowers out here that are bee friendly. So, as long as we don't hit it with the lawnmower, we'll have some big plants for them to eat when they need it. Um, they are 
late summer plants. Bees a lot of times will um, have trouble finding food um, late summer because all the flowers have already bloomed and um, turned into fruit. So we'll get into this second bit. I think I'll let Tyler do this one because he's been itching to use his new suit. So again, he's just going to puff in the top there, calm them down. You have to work your way down with them. You know, a little at the front. Keeps them from trying to rush out at you. We have had a few issues with predators with them. Um, it's been going on for a while. We tried Irish Spring Soap because we were told that might be a deterrent. And we put it on those strings. Whatever it is, ate all of our soap. We put four bars of soap out here and ate the soap. So I don't know what kind of creature eats soap. I don't know what. Oh, and rat poison. Oh yeah, I also put rat poison out here because I was so irritated at the fact that they were trying to destroy my hive. Um, and then digging up all of my mulch I put out here. Um, we were told that skunks sometimes will try and grab the bees, which is why we have them up off the ground far enough that a skunk would have real difficulty getting it in there, but a raccoon, however, could probably reach it. He just flew out of the ground. Oh, man, right to the ground. Is it just a baby? Um, that one is damaged, oh. so if you look at its back end, yeah. it's probably going to die soon. I don't know if they do like a kamikaze thing where they'll sacrifice themselves and fly away from the hive. That way they don't attract predators. For the glory of the queen. <laughs> For the glory of the queen. <laughs> You're good? It's mostly empty. Was there sugar in there? Yeah. Oh, okay, so this is an Italian hive and there is zero sugar left. There isn't anything at all. We just have the sugar water and that's oh, half gone now. Um, so these guys are voracious eaters compared to the Russians. They will just engorge themselves on whatever you give them. Um, so these guys, last time we were in here, they were doing a little bit better. It seemed like there was a lot more of them than the Russians, even though we got the Russians a week before. Um, and when you order bees, they come in packs of three pounds. So two pounds, three pounds, or five pound packs. But typically what you, what people buy are the three pounds packs. Um, so they should have started